that here is another file, the one that I actually did for the show, that here is the, the layer that we're in, and this the layer mask is the entire thing, and I painted the color, and I used, uh, I, I did the, painted the color, how vague, um, I used the paint, bu paint bucket tool, dropped in one color, and then did some, using a marbling brush, did more like texturing on top of it. And then what you can do is highlight and shadow to do the individual layers. So that if you want to give this whole thing some dimensionality, you can start adding highlights and shadows to the different layers. And this is what I did right here. And I did this using just the gradient tool. So let's go back to the paint elevation and let me begin a new selection, create a new layer, move this up to the top, and we're in it. Okay. And you can Um, using the paint bucket tool, create some highlights and shadows. Oops, I mean the gradient tool. Duh. Here I am. So there are some options with the gradient tool, and you, which you can get by doing this little arrow right here, that there is going from the foreground to the background color, going foreground to transparent, and then there are all these other wacky crazy things. We want foreground to transparent. In Photoshop, the white and gray checkerboards means transparent. You can see that or that there is no no pixel paint information there. You'll see that it's also down here where we have nothing in this layer. It shows the, the checkerboard. And so, in the gradient tool there is a flat line going from one to the other, a circle sort of gradient. And with the gradient tool you you use two pixel two clicks of your mouse to create the um, the gradient. One, two. Hmm. I think I need. I know why what I have. We can do it all the way white. I don't like that. I think I'm just going to do it like that. And you can set the opacity. Like if this was 87%, there would be a difference. That it's getting lighter. Now if we flip over and do for the background color. And what I like to do is have the foreground and background be two different colors that I like. And I like sort of Payne's gray purplish shadow. And then you can use this little thing to flip back and forth. Um, so now that's the foreground color and what we're going to work with. So there we are right up here. The foreground thing. And I'm going to undo that. Um, I'm going to take it down a little bit. Take the opacity down. Try to make it a little subtler. Do the same thing over here. And the longer the um, the drag and the distance between the two points, the the longer the fade is between the two things the, the, of the gradient, I should say. So. Um, so you can have a subtle sort of distinction there. It could be, this way. It's kind of be sort of like this is more. This is closer, and this is sort of curving back, curving back. All right. So there we have it. And so using that, I'm going to hit deselect, and this is the beginning of our gradient. Adding some texture to it. And even if and and if you do it too strongly, you can even pull it back using the opacity thing slider right here in the layers to make it as subtle as you want. So there we go. And then doing that again and again can give you some shadows right here. This is right here. This is using the. Uh, So that's the basics of getting a painter's elevation out of a Vectorworks draw.
Thanks for spending some of your valuable time with us here at the Total Theater Podcast. Please visit the podcast page at CourtneyCollinsStudio.com slash podcast to leave a comment or send me an email at owen at CourtneyCollinsStudio.com. Please come back and see us again.